the most enduring mysteries about human biology, why people develop such vastly different skin colors. A new study in the journal Science could hold the answer, but it also opens the floodgates for a host of medical and ethical questions. ABC's Dan Harris has more. The new study says one incredibly small genetic mutation in one of more than three billion component parts or letters of the human genome is largely responsible for people having white skin instead of brown skin. Scientists think the mutation may have formed tens of thousands of years ago as early humans who all had dark skin were making their initial migration north out of Africa and into Europe. Dr. Keith Chang, lead author of the study, hopes it will reduce discrimination based on complexion. What's very striking about what we found is that this issue that is so charged is due to a change in one letter of our, our instruction book of life. Out of three billion, it's one. I hope it would particularly help us appreciate that skin color is not something that we should attach some enormous significance too. We can demystify it by this kind of molecular investigation. Some people argue this science will have very little impact out here in the real world. They say one study simply won't do much to end discrimination. I don't think that scientists have much impact on the way people interact on the street level. And I don't think that uh, Joe Blow or Joe Sixpack on the street is gonna read this article or hear about it, if they hear about it at all and then fundamentally change the way they interact with respect to the issue of race. Dr. Chang is more optimistic. He hopes his study will, in the long run, prove that judging people based on skin color is, quote, silly. He hopes the study will not only have cultural impacts, but also scientific and medical applications, such as helping find new ways to fight skin cancer and perhaps more. For Good Morning America, Dan Harris, ABC News, New York. And we are joined by the study's uh, lead researcher, Dr. Keith Chang, also a professor at uh, Penn State College of Medicine, Hershey campus. Doctor, congratulations on your findings. Thank you very much. Uh, let's pick it up where Dan's piece left off there. You hope that this will chip away at racism in some way, but what are uh, some of the practical applications of this discovery? Will people in the future be able to pick a skin color? Well, picking the skin color is uh, maybe a little ambitious. I think uh, modifying skin color might be possible. Uh, it's not that we couldn't have begun to investigate that uh, beforehand, but uh, this gives us a new uh, tool in our toolbox. And in terms of some skin diseases, you feel this may help combat uh, skin cancers? Um, most prominently, I, it provides a, a new target for immunotherapy for a malignant melanoma. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the origins. I'm curious, you know, having light skin in a world of dark skin people doesn't seem to be that advantageous. I'm wondering how those early Caucasians uh, survived and, and went on to thrive. Well, in fact, uh, so you needed to have dark skin in Africa to survive in very light, uh, bright sunlight. But when you move further north into Scandinavia, for example, there's not much sun and you must have that sunlight to produce vitamin D or you're going to get rickets and die. Uh, interesting. And then in terms of uh, Asian and Latino skin colors, were those mutations as well, do you think? Or was that breeding? And well, Yes, well, the, so independent uh, changes occurred in the Asians. We don't know what those changes are yet, but that'll be interesting to find out. Okay. Well, it, it really is a fascinating science, and I know there were a couple of eureka moments for you when you discuss, made these discoveries, and we'll be discussing this, I'm sure, from here on out. We appreciate your time, Dr. Chang. You're very welcome. Thanks, Professor. Kate? Bill, we turn